Slaves here with the Senior Pickleball Report, powered by TNC Network. Let's get it going. Today in our People of Pickleball episode, we speak with Vinay Bahaguna of the Princeton Bruisers. He is basically part of the ownership team of the newly formed Bruisers out of New Jersey, Princeton, New Jersey, that is, in the National Pickleball League, the champion senior pro league that is starting its second season this coming May. But before we get to that, if you like this content, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out our newsletter below. Subscribe to that. Get all your info on the Pickleverse. All the links and descriptions. Free stuff. Not really, but cheap. <laughs> Almost free. Bargains on balls and paddles and apparel. You name it. And check out our merch page as well. A little bit of a deal there as well. All right, folks, let's get to that discussion with Vignette. Vinay Bahaguna, welcome to the Senior Pickleball Report. You are part of the ownership team of one of the new six teams of the National Pickleball League, the Princeton Bruisers. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me on the show, and I'm excited uh, to be representing Princeton Bruisers. Yeah, I mean... I knew they were going to add teams, um, you know, because I, I went to a few events and obviously I've interviewed people over the last year or so. And there was uh, the talk of, you know, how many teams they were going to add. And we'll get into all of that. But let's figure out really what attracted you to the game itself. Um, obviously, it's blown up since COVID. <laughs> um, everybody seems to be playing. We get these numbers every week about how many millions of people are playing pickleball and we're not even scratching the surface talking about internationally yet. And we'll get to that as well. So how did this game find you? You know, it's uh, call it serendipity a little bit. And then obviously like the multitude, you know, COVID happened, right? So it was, it was actually two things. So I had a neighbor, I still have a neighbor uh, and he was into pickleball uh, much before COVID. He had been playing for a couple of years. So he mentioned it to me. And I went and played once, uh, which was <laughs> in a you know typical YMCA kind of setting on a basketball court indoors, uh, playing with beginners. And uh, to tell you frankly, it was a turnoff. I mean, I, I because I played with people who had never played any sport before, probably, and I was there, uh, and I was already playing racquetball at that point uh, in, at, okay. at, an op- at an open level. So compared to the fast-paced. Uh, racquetball i mean when i played pickleball on those indoor courts with indoor balls and you know with people who were just there i guess to get fit so didn't find it didn't find it competitive enough and then uh, i thought probably i'll start playing in my 70s or 80s you know <clears throat> when when i can't play racquetball anymore so so the initial interaction of uh, the introduction to pickleball wasn't that great but then pandemic happened you know we were all kind of Inside, indoors, uh, really uh, right. no no outlet per se, you know, to get any exercise. And as luck would have it, we had six outdoor dedicated pickleball courts in our township, just a mile down from my house. <clears throat> so the whole bunch of us who played racquetball, and there were one or two who had actually played a little bit of pickleball. They said, you know, hey, how about we start playing this sport? And yeah. so, we sh- so we showed up at the court and there were a few other people who had been playing there. But I tell you, I mean, it is such an addictive sport. I mean, once I think I started playing it, I don't remember. I think I ever picked up my racquetball racket after that. I mean, you know, that was that was the end of it. And I also yeah. played another sport, golf. And okay. same thing happened. Same thing happened with golf. I mean, my golf buddies are absolutely mad that you know I, I really don't play with them. I don't have time. And now with ownership and NPL, <laughs> right. I mean it's 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 just conversations now with them. You know, no no golf, uh, no golfing. <laughs> well it's cheaper than golf. I mean I love playing golf too and I played for years, but I mean to go out and play some of these really nice courses, you know, it's a small fortune. And then obviously you throw clubs on top of that, the balls, the outfit, whatever. Um Racquetball, a little more reasonable. What was the transition like, though? Because racquetball, pretty risky game. Are you a risky pickleball player? So I was. And uh, as my friend uh, Rich Lopez and, you know, we got to Steve right. Uh, right for race. So they said, uh, Vinay, you still haven't gotten the whole racquetball out of you yet. So, <laughs> so, so, so I'm getting <laughs> So I'm getting there. Uh, you know, I think, I think I've got 90% of it out. But I think what helped... Uh, was that I had played a lot of racket sports uh, growing up, right? So I, okay. had played, I had played tennis, I had played badminton, I had played uh, squash, 
so uh, table tennis, ping pong. So, you know, a, a lot of that actually helped because, uh, you know, I was used to the whole concept of net. Right. And we had some players, I mean, very high level racquetball players who just could not transition into playing pickleball uh, at the <laughs> same level uh, for the yeah. reason they were just not used to the whole, you know, net concept because racquetball, you're trying to hit that ball all, as low as right. possible. Right. So. Right. So, right. So some of them came, they were there for maybe a few months and then they gave up. They, they just couldn't make that transition. But I think what helped me was my background in racket sports, other racket sports. And I think that that kind of made the transition easier. Uh, yeah. And, you know, and and, and I think uh, also helped from the fact that you played so many different sports, you know, so uh, different racket sports. So that adds to it also, you know, like Ben Johns. I right. Think always, oh, for sure. Right. Ben John always says, I mean, you know, if you are want to become a pickleball player and you're 12 or 13 year old, I mean, just don't play only that sport, you know, play other sports because there's something yes. about, you know, so. <clears throat> I think that's what's changed. You know, guys, my age and your age, like you just mentioned, we did everything, you know, we played golf and we played all these ball sports. And today, as I watch my, you know, nieces and nephews grow up and things like that, it's such a specialized world where, um, you know, they're only playing one thing and they probably were much better at that one thing than I was because I played a bunch of things, but overall it seems like their breadth of knowledge and their ability to adapt, um, is somewhat taken from them because I just remember this. I went out, this is years ago. One of my nieces uh, brought a boyfriend over and he played on the football team and we're like, and so I went out there and we're going to like throw the ball around and he threw the ball and I was like, that guy's on the football team. But he was a lineman and he had been trained as a lineman since he was like nine. Right. <laughs> so he right. never had to throw the ball. <laughs> Correct. Right. And, and that's all he did. <laughs> and he was a great lineman. Um, but um, yeah, he was very limited in his skill set at moving to something else. And I see that your point. I played with some guys who played racquetball for years at a very, very high level. And um some of them adjust, but I think some of them have, like you mentioned, um, other racket sport backgrounds. The other guys just hit a flat, low ball for years. You're right. You know, and that's what they do. And they do it well. I mean, it's Correct. a tough ball coming low, coming hard. But once you get used to the speed and the pace of it and you get your paddle out there, um, it, then that's really all they got. So, Correct. No, 100 percent. You know, I, I think yeah. ping pong probably helped the most. Uh, I think, yeah. uh, you know, and especially the way – the paddle technology, uh, you know, the whole evolution, the game's changing, right? I mean, it's constantly oh. evolving, <laughs> yeah. right? So, okay. uh, I mean, so, so I think, I think, uh, I think we'll see a lot of, lot more, I think, uh, ping pong players or table tennis players uh, coming, oh, yeah. to the fo coming to the forefront, especially internationally, since you mentioned that a bit, but I think, from, yeah. you know, other, con other countries where it's popular. So I can definitely see that happening more and more. Yeah, absolutely. As it explodes across Asia, and I just talked to um, a, a APP player, um, Megan Fudge, and she played in the Indian Open last week or two weeks ago. And um, not to, I, I can't, I don't have the exact quote, but the vibe I got from her is like, you have no idea what's coming. Like <laughs> when this sport explodes into those countries overseas Correct. and the excitement and the different backgrounds of sports and paddle sports they bring to the game. She goes, I was seeing shots that I'd never seen before. <laughs> right. Right. And, right. and that's what's coming once we get out of the bubble of the U.S. and it you know, moves across Asia and Europe and so forth. Correct. Um, I'm excited to see what this what this game looks like in five years. <laughs> Absolutely. I think I, th I think we're witnessing history right here. Right. Seeing the game evolve. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think for the last yeah. probably 15, 20, 30 years, it was probably more or less, you know, with some incremental changes. Yeah. But I think, yeah, but I think last couple of years have been, I mean, uh, you know, uh, oh, absolutely. Incredible. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. So it should be pretty exciting. I, th I kind of equate it to like when I go back and I watch on YouTube pickleball, pro pickleball at like 2017 and I watch it now, it's like, it's not even the same game. <laughs> right. And I imagine True. in five years that we're going to do the same thing. And go, Oh, remember that? <laughs> right, 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 right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And then one thing you have to kind of uh, think where it might stop with the whole evolution in technology, right? With the paddles, especially, right? right? So, like, where are we going? <laughs> right, exactly. Where are we going? Where is it going to stop? You know, I mean, uh, yeah. So I think, I mean, I I'm, think wearing, I'm wearing eye gear now when I play, and I did it when I first started playing two and a half years ago. But, I, you know, the paddle, I review paddles, and some of these paddles I receive are just 
unbelievable the, the the pace you could put on the ball and the spin and the dip you can put on the ball and um it's yeah it's getting to the point where you're right i'd like to see where we sort of go okay that's sort of the line of demarcation <laughs> right um be, before it gets to be just something else an entirely correct. different sport because on some levels it already is right yeah correct absolutely absolutely correct yeah. on that yep so ah. when we talk about getting into pickleball it's one thing to obviously take up a sport and play it. It's another thing to play at a pro level. And then it's another thing to um, become ownership in a pro team. So walk me through some of that. Like, you know, obviously you, 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 you get to the point where you can play at a pro level, at, you know, for 50 plus. And then, you know, you're like, well, I think I want to um, pursue baby being part of ownership of a team. So talk me through a little bit of that process. Sure. So, uh, so I started playing around, you know, like I said, during the pandemic, I uh, started playing different levels, 5 and then, you know, once I turned 50, which was, uh, you know, right in the middle of the pandemic, I mean, I, you know, yeah. I was eligible to play a senior pro or uh, play 50 plus. So I got into that, enjoyed, and I've always liked playing competitive, right? So that's always yeah. been, uh, you know, uh, so I don't want to just putz around, right? I want to be competitive with whatever sure. I do. So I said, let's, let's, let's uh, uh, see what options there are. And uh, when, I heard about NPL and I knew Michael Chen because I had met him at a couple okay. of events uh, in New Jersey. And uh, yeah. so we had Go played Jersey. against, so you know, he, he, had, he had reached out to me, uh, yeah. you know, when we had met. And so when I heard about it, I was like, hey, where do I stand? And, you know, in the whole senior pro uh, league yeah. aspect of it, because uh, what I do remember is that I played one tournament before, which was, I think, a PPA tournament in uh, DC and Maryland, actually. And uh, <clears throat> again, there, there wasn't a big showing. So, and New Jersey doesn't have, I'm, I was the only one from New Jersey playing in the NPL last year. So, uh, uh, so there aren't any, you know, too many senior pro players. So yeah, I really right. wanted to see where, where I stood in the whole, you know, at the national level. So I went for the combine. Uh, you know, to Oklahoma yeah. City last year, uh, and you know, <laughs> and it was great because suddenly now I was seeing people from literally all over the world, right? Because we had people from Singapore yeah. and we had people from right. Australia, so uh, so that got me into the whole NPL side of things. And then probably like maybe a lot of people that you spoke to, players who were part of it yeah. last year, this was probably the most fun we had since high school. Right. For some of us. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> right. So, sure. so for a yeah. so whole bunch of us. And I mean, you know, and that was it. They're just the bonding. We were all in a similar age group. Right. Maybe right. a lot of us in, in a similar point in, in terms of where our kids were, or, you know, a personal lives, professional lives. So I think all of that came together and, and, and we had so much fun. So as a player. Now, the second aspect of it was uh, that looking at that and having, you know, players enjoying uh, both, you know, uh, the competition and 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 the interaction with other players and owners, and uh, you know, we had a great interaction with our team owner, you know, Bob Stroman, who owns the right. yeah. Naples JBB. I mean, you know, so that was a extremely, extremely, you know, a great experience. So when an opportunity came and when we heard they were expanding, I said, you know, I believed in the league, I believed in the players, right. I believed in what was offering. So I spoke to a few friends of mine and I said, listen, you know, they're expanding and I think this is a great league to invest in and to own yeah. a team. And they were, they were on board right away. I mean, you know, they said, Vinay, wow. if, yeah, so they were saying, hey, if you're saying this, I mean, you know, and we would love to be part of it. So they, I didn't even have to sell it to them. I didn't even have to sell it to them. I mean, they, wow. they were, the minute I mentioned it, they were on board. They're like, what do we need to do? You know, what do we need to do? <laughs> right, right. So, so we, How you know, exciting. So, yeah, so we got in touch with Michael and said, you know, here it is. And I said, we have some serious, uh, you know, people interested in investing yeah. and buying a team. And, and that got the process rolling. And uh, I think we were the first team to sign up as an expansion team. So we were the seventh Correct. team. Yes. So we Yay. were the seventh team. So Lucky number we, seven, right on. <laughs> lucky number seven. There you go. So, yes, we were the seventh team. And uh, and that's how that that whole thing happened. So it was just a, the, a mix of enjoying as a player, right? Mm -hmm. uh, seeing uh, what it uh, brought out. Plus, the other thing which was big was that with the whole MLP and PPA stuff going on, right? one of the smartest things that, you know, uh, the, the NPL folks did was that they signed up all the top players, right? So 
right. you know, they're all signed players. So now for the next couple of years, I mean, you know, from a team sport perspective, uh, they're committed to it. So which allows the league to grow to a different level, yeah. right? And and already uh, the current CEO, you know, Paul, uh, is doing a phenomenal job, right? Uh, and, yeah. and you know, yeah. getting it to that next professional level. So I think I think everything is kind of lined up to really, you know, take it to the next level. Please with the Senior Pickleball Report, reminding you to check out our podcast, People of Pickleball. That's where I speak with all the people in pickleball, the industry, players, team owners, apparel creators, uh, people that run organizations, people that create apps, you name it. We're talking to them on People of Pickleball. It's in the playlist of our YouTube channel. It's our podcast. Check it out. Lots of good information there and um, lots of really cool folks doing amazing things. You can also catch our podcast on Spotify and Amazon. Check out the link in the description. Just my experience not from the outside, it's, 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 a, remarkable, it's a remarkable organization um, in such a short period of time. I mean, if you look at like when they really started to kind of go for it, um, you know, in the, the late fall of, you know, 2022, right. and, then, and then going to the events, I was blown away by, I guess, not only how organized it was, but the feeling of how people were being treated um, as professionals and the gratefulness for the opportunity, obviously, like you mentioned, to play against your peers right. and to become part of a larger community. As you all know, senior pro community is pretty tight. And this just kind of expands this, which I've you know mentioned in, in countless interviews, but um I do think I, I just got a feeling from being at other events and being at other leagues and t- in tournaments, this was something different. And um, it was something different. Be- it felt just much more, I guess, communal and, and family like in a lot of right. ways without, you know, getting too cliche. But um, talk about your experience a little bit. I mean, you play, obviously, you, you go to the combine, which was historical in itself, having a combine right. for people 50 plus, I mean, unheard of. Then, um, what was it like, you know, hearing your name getting drafted? Well, very surreal, you know, because uh, I was in yeah. because none of none of us knew if you were getting drafted. So uh, right, right, uh, right. So uh, so I actually only made a trip, uh, and my family was there actually with me for the draft. So oh, we wow. all were we all were down in Naples, and uh, without knowing there's some pressure. <laughs> So, 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 so there was something behind that. I, I told my family, I said, you know, you come along with me because if nothing else, it'll be a vacation, right? We'll be like a little right, mini right. vacation. So yeah. I said, I won't, I won't feel bad if I don't get picked. At least I'll think I came down for a family vacation. So, right. so that, so, so that was the mindset. But uh, so my last name, right? Bahuguna, letter B. So obviously when they're going down alphabetically, alphabetically, <laughs> you know that once you've crossed B, that you're not going to be on that team, right? So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you're BA, so it's in the beginning at least. <laughs> Correct. Correct, right? So so the first team went and then the second team, right, they announced. And I think you're probably the third or the fourth. I don't really remember exactly. But at that point, uh, you know, obviously it was a big relief the minute it happened. And, and I oh, knew it yeah. because Bob just like stood for a second and he said, I might butcher this name. And I still remember that. He said, I might butcher this name. And I said, that might be my name, right? So as I was listening, and then he took a little pause, said my name. And then yeah. obviously, you know, the, the, the excitement, you know, in, in, in your 50s, when you know, yeah. you're not really thinking of playing professionally, you know, a drafted player. Like right. That. So, so, you know, all of those feelings kind of coming in together at the same time, walking down and, you know, and then and, and just the whole excitement, I mean, at that first uh, draft, which was last year, was was you know as I said surreal. I mean you know uh, with yeah. all your pe- with all your peers and and you know and, and you couldn't put a uh, a better bunch of people together to form NPL than you know Michael, Beth, and uh, Rick. I mean you know right. did a phenomenal job and then really felt like family. And then anyone else who was uh, helping out, uh, you know I remember Julie Weston, right? She was there. Uh, oh yeah, you know, all smart, over the place, <laughs> all over the place. You know, help helping out, smiling face, right? right? Uh, yeah, uh, it just felt like family. Literally felt like family. You know, the the, the, yeah. the first year, and obviously we are growing, we are becoming more professional. But I think it's 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 
the core group, right? I think right. That that that's important. So I think we have the right people. Uh, the owners, again, with every owner, every owner uh, team that I met, the team owners that I met at the combine, post combine. I mean, everyone's been great, irrespective of if you know you were part of that team or some other team, right? So right, right. So so I think it was a lot of that, right? So a lot of that which really uh, drew me to uh, you know investing in or you know owning a team, <clears throat> right? Or right, going absolutely. or going down that path, yeah. <clears throat> going down that path, and yeah, and now you have. I mean, you have. I'm sure. <laughs> You're, you're discovering quickly um, another set of things to think about and responsibilities and not only about your own personal game, but um, obviously assembling a team and, you know, uniforms and, you know, obviously cool logo and all those little things that you're like, holy cow, we got to do a lot of stuff right. in a short period of time. The good news is you're not alone. Um, you know, you have right. obviously people in your, your, your team and you have other teams to bounce ideas off of and learn from. And it seems like to me, Again, from the outside, it's a pretty giving group. I mean, you know, obviously you guys all compete hard and you're all competitors and it is a very high level. And I always recommend to go see it in person because right. it's one thing to watch it on television. But if you're standing there and you're watching and then you say to yourself, these people are like the youngest is 50. <laughs> right. And, you know, it's a very, very high level of, of ball. So We'll get into a little bit more of the team ownership in a minute, but like, what did you find out about your own game? Probably pretty quick about what you needed to do to compete at this level, you know, for six events. So a couple of things. So, you know, combine was one revelation because right. you know, everyone came up, but then you obviously didn't have the signed players or, you know, people who already right. picked up. Right. So, so, uh, so that was a, a a mixed bag in the sense you saw a lot of players from all over the country. Some were very good, some were okay. I mean, you know, it was mm -hmm. a combine, right? So right. everyone came and, um, you know, uh, so kind of, I would say finished in the top 10% at the combine. Uh, all know, right. When, when the combine finished, so had had more yeah. wins against my name than than losses. So uh, yeah, so that, so, solid. So, that, so that felt good, right? From that perspective that, okay, right. you know, uh, I mean, you're there. And then when you come, and play those six events to your point, you know, uh, yeah. I think not only mine, but I think everyone's game improved, right? Yeah. Because where do you get that opportunity, right? I mean, like to play against Rick and, you know, some of the others, Scott Moore and, you know, some of the uh, top players, Beth. So that I think was the biggest change because irrespective of where anyone was, it, you know, they were playing part one, part two, part three, part four. Right. Everyone's game by the end of the season uh, changed. And, you know, uh, some of it was the skill set, but I think a lot had to do with the mental aspect of it, right? Stop right. Selection and things, uh, things of that nature. So I think uh, that was a journey, right? That's a journey which was well worth it. And mm -hmm. that's what I tell people. I said, you know, uh, uh, don't look at it as, you know, as an expense, but if you're serious about improving your game, right? Be part of this because your game will definitely change for better, right? Yes. The time you start, to the time you finish. And it's not only because you're playing, because on your team, we had John Sperling, right? Right. Now you're drawing on his knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. and, and his humor, right? You're drawing yeah, on everything, right? So, right? Uh, so from that perspective, right? Where would you get a chance to spend six weekends, right? With someone of his caliber who's right. giving you input and not only him, other players. I mean, you know, I was one of them. I mean, I'm, I'm never shy asking for any advice, right? So yeah. My, so after every game that I played, uh, be it Natalia Bagby or be it, you know, whoever I was playing against, I would go and say, hey, what do you think? Where can I improve? What can I focus on? And everyone was so nice and giving tips and, you know, uh, insights right. and what I should do. So I think so that that whole aspect, which I think you can't even put any price to, you know, no, uh, yeah. just, just just helping your game. I think so that that was that was huge. I think that was immense. And I think and that's what it is. So, uh, you know. Come out, you know, I always tell people, try out, see where you stand. And, you know, and then it's like you mentioned, it's a family, it's a brotherhood, it's a sisterhood, it's, it's a whole yeah. thing. And, you know, helping everyone grow. And and the biggest thing is now that you go for a tournament, you know, there's so many more people. <laughs> That's the thing, right? Right. So you say hi to them. I mean, it's just like literally you feel like you're going to a, a local to tournament. Per se, right? right because, yeah. you know, because you know so many people and it's always good to see smiling faces and, you know, it, it helps everything. So I think. No, so I think from that perspective, those six events, I mean, like I said, the game changed uh, immensely. Yeah. That helped me. I mean, 
I did end up winning the Philadelphia Open, uh, the senior pro. Again, it wasn't a great, uh, uh, you know, it wasn't a deep A win is a win, Vinay. A, yeah, <laughs> a win is as, a win. As a friend of mine said, he said, you showed up, they did. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, damn right, like, damn right. But but I think a large part of it was, again, uh, you know, the experience that I kind of uh, gained over uh, those six events. So I think that, that helped. Yeah. Me. Yeah, obviously, you know, just watching people, you know, like John, you mentioned and Natalie, just how they prepare um, right. even for a match or even how they warm up, just like sort of the little things um, when right. they call timeouts, you know, the things people never think about, like everybody's kind of like, well, they're, you know, their backhand's amazing or they do this amazing, but it's all sort of the the things that connect <laughs> your game and, and taking it to another level. Like I love watching John play. I've never seen anybody, at least um, I, I have, I, I, I should say, it, he reminds me in some ways the way he moves in the in the the ease of which he moves, oh. sort of like J.W. Johnson. Like he just doesn't know, he just doesn't look like he's working and yet he's killing you. <laughs> no, you're, <laughs> you're like, absolutely. how is this guy doing it? He's silky smooth. He never seems like he's out of position. But those are little things that you either watch or talk to him or pick up by just being around somebody like that, like you mentioned. So, right. So there was one game specifically I want to mention where him and I yeah. played against uh, Jose Derisi and Steve Dawson. And uh, <laughs> at, you want to talk at, about two opposites on the same team, Derisi <laughs> and Dawson. <laughs> so correct. Correct. And uh, it was a close game. I mean, you know, went, went to three. Uh, yeah. I think they won, they won the vote. They, they did win uh, the third one, 11, nine. I think we were up yeah. nine seven, but that particular game uh, during the game, I think I got like a, a free coaching session from uh, from John Sterling because his yeah. insight into the game, the insight, right, and and yeah. the things that he was talking while we were playing, what we should be doing as strategy, and that constant communication and giving that input was priceless. I mean, I mean to me, like yeah. that's probably the best lesson I've had in pickleball ever. I mean, you know that that. that 45 minutes of playing those three games uh, yeah. in that match. I mean, uh, unbelievable. So that got me how this person's thinking, you know, all the, all the players at the highest level, I mean, what their thought process is, you know, when, when they're playing. So, uh, so you know, okay, yeah. something like that, priceless, right? Priceless. Yeah, and it's a credit to you to be, I mean, you, the level you play at, to be on the court with, I mean, those guys are three legends <laughs> that you're, you know, <laughs> And just so, you know, to compete against those other two guys, you learn things as well. I mean, you know, the, the amount of experience in, in, in uh, the gamesmanship and everything to it. Um, yeah, really invaluable lessons that you've obviously picked up. Now, on the same end with the team aspect, whether you like it or not, you're paying attention during the year about how teams kind of organize and how they run things and their culture that they're building. Um, and so talk about like what you kind of like to see um, from the bruisers as far as building your team culture and, and going into 2024. I know it's the first season. It's hard to have expectations. You don't know who you have on your team yet or any of those things. But there are some things that I'm, I'm sure you're thinking about. So, so I think, uh, I mean, skill sets obviously important. Everyone wants to sure. win, right? So, But I think the personality aspect of it and how we behave on, on the court and off the court, I think is, 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 is very important. This was something, uh, you know, I saw being highlighted and, you know, taken to the next level by Bob himself mm -hmm. at the Naples, uh, you know, JBB United. Uh, he said, you know, what I want you guys to do is be an example of, you know, the true sportsman. I mean, you know, on, on yeah. the court. So, so I think that's that's important. I think, you know, I, we want our players and part of our process in choosing will be personalities and their you know on board right. behavior and how they interact not only with the, within the team members but you know with with opponents on the court and off the court so i think uh, i think that's 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 critical that's important i think that culture is important where even when we step off the court you know people say hey you want fair and square and you guys yeah. play well so i think so that that i think is important uh you also want to have we had some within our team couple of uh Great personalities, if I may, right? Sure, and, uh, sure absolutely. We, we had uh, Rachel Krug, who was like a motherly figure to all of us. And, you know, <laughs> and she, she kept the whole team united in terms of things we did, activities. So, you know, everyone brings their own personality and stuff. So right. I think getting that right mix of personality, uh, right set of chemistry, right? Because you could have two great players, but then they may not have the chemistry to play together. 
So that's right. very important when you're picking your players, right? Now it's going to be interesting this year because it's a snake draft and you know you have 12 uh-huh. teams. So you right. have 12 teams. And I think it was the same format last year. We had the snake draft. So, you know, uh, you may not be able to pick everyone that you want, right? Obviously, sure. uh, you know, so I think it's going to be interesting from that perspective. So I think, you know, and that's a challenge for every team right out there. I mean, every team owner uh, putting that together, but some of, right. it be, some, some of it would be that um, you would also want, if you can, there is something, if you can pick more local players, right? Because then you can practice a little bit practice. more. Right. Within within the vicinity, I would say, I mean, not if, uh, uh, you know, uh, not within the same state, but where they can travel, drive down and maybe do some, you know, playing together. So I think right. that that's that's important if we can. And that's a challenge for us, truly, because we don't have that many players in Northeast just in general. Right. OK. Yeah. Uh, so that that's a little bit of a challenge for us. Uh, but that that's at the back of our mind. If we could, you know, uh, pick players yeah. uh, from 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 that perspective. And then, then you go in with the team that you choose and then you do your best, right? So once you've gotten through, and then obviously there are a few things which I won't disclose, right? Because that's part of our strategy. <laughs> right, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, your right, secret right. sauce. So, so secret sauce, there you go. So, so, so these are some of the things, yeah. Uh, that, yeah. That, that, uh, high level, yeah. <clears throat> Very cool. So obviously um, that's a big part of your upcoming year, um, 2024, being you know uh, part of the team ownership, obviously uh, a new team, uh, you know, expectations, whatever they may be. And I'm assuming you're going to play again. That is correct. Yes. So I, I, yeah. I will be playing, uh, you know, uh, so that, that, that obviously uh, uh, is important, right. Uh, for, right. For, for, for me and, and I guess for the team also. So from that perspective, yeah. yes, absolutely looking at it. So it's going to be an interesting mix. So that's other conversation I've been having with some other team owners who also played last year. Mm-hmm. How to kind of balance that because you know it, it it can and I've I've been on the in a similar situation with my golf league where you know we we would have outings where I would be in the fray for top three on a championship weekend and then you're trying to organize and you know it it, it does yeah. uh, you know it, it it it's there it affects you if not consciously subconsciously it's there because you have ten other things running through your mind sure. so that's going to bring another set of challenges from that perspective so but we do yeah. have. Uh, you know, quite a few team members within our team, so owners. So I think uh, I can, you know, and then uh, great friends who have known some for years. Yeah. So you know, to kind of uh, rely on them to take over certain responsibilities, and so I think I think we are, you know, uh, well poised from that perspective, uh, in in terms of uh, the ownership that we have. Uh, excellent. To excellent. With different areas. Yeah. <clears throat> right on. Well, I, I mean, I look forward to to, to seeing y'all. And what you put what you put together this season and the other five teams that are obviously entering before we get you out of here besides NPL what else do you have on your your pickleball calendar that you're looking forward to in in 2024 as an individual so as an individual uh one thing that I haven't done much is play in APP tournaments as much to the uh, I would like to play right so I haven't played as many so the next one that I'm playing is the US Open <clears throat> oh yeah exciting and, yes and the two people that I'm playing with are my you know teammates from last year's team so oh. i'm playing with i'm playing with david george in men's and oh, then, i love david yeah so david and i are playing together we were roommates uh you know great chemistry there so uh we're looking yeah. forward to that and then i'm playing with a uno pet who i uh-huh. also who also i played with and 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 and, and the, she was my mixed partner for most of the matches uh at the npl season last year so she's going to be my mixed partner so you know so that's that's something which is coming up in another month. Uh, yeah, the last one I fast. played was the last one I played was <clears throat> Daytona, and that was interesting because I got to play against Lendo. So in the yeah, first what match, was that like? <laughs> so so it was, it was good because suddenly you know you, we grew up like watching him on television, right? Sure, so, yeah, so right. Play. So suddenly he was like, the man. Still, <laughs> he was he was the man, and this was the first match of you know the of the, of the day, and at seven thirty in the morning, and I see the draw, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm playing Vincent Van Platt, and I'm playing Lendl, right? <clears throat> so we we first of all we had a great wow. conversation right before the match, so so I was lucky, I would say, in, you know, who, who got to play against Lendl, and yeah. boy, boy, I tell you, I mean, obviously, you know, uh, I mean, he's senior to me, you know, he's by I think he's sixty three, so. Yeah, uh, his movements might have been a little slow, but like yeah. his hands were amazing. I mean, you know, yeah. uh, his hands were amazing. I mean, you, you could yeah. see 
Uh, yeah, you could see it, what he had. <laughs> what he had. I mean, you know, especially speed ups. I mean, you know, he he was right there. I mean, you, you couldn't yeah. get a ball past him. I mean, his drives were phenomenal. So yeah. so that was that was that was interesting. So playing more, playing more. That's what I have on calendar right now. It's combine, which I'm flying yeah. out for. You know, so yep. uh, so combines this weekend, and then we have another one in Dallas, and then U.S. Open, and then the season starts in May. So you know, it's already off to a, a to a quick start, and then try to fit in a few tournaments here and there. Um, we the New York Open would definitely be one that I'll be playing. Uh, you yeah. know, the the APP New York Open. They got rid of two. Uh, I hope they come back, but New Jersey Open and Philly Open because they yep. didn't have the draw, I guess, to the to the level. So, um, uh, but some more I'll play, you know, uh, and then travel a bit. So that that's the plan right now. So. Yeah, uh, so right. looking forward to it. But within NPL itself, I think it's going to keep me very busy. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, I'm sure. Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> you have a you have a full plate. Um, what what kind of paddle are you playing with these days? So I switched to Gearbox Pro, uh, you know, elongated one, the power version. Oh so yeah, a, yeah. So so that's that's <laughs> the, the one. I'm, it's, it, it is. It is. Uh, but you know. Uh, you definitely need soft hands with that, right? Because uh, yeah. it, it, it takes a little bit of controlling. But no, and 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 that was the the, the first time I was exposed to it was actually at the NPL at the last uh, okay. match that we had, and I think Joe was playing with it, and I I was shocked with the way that ball was coming back, and I I couldn't believe it, and I told yeah. Joe, and Joe asked me, he said, why didn't you speed up against me? You were just, I said, you don't realize I tried right to the beginning, and the ball came so fast, and I could, <laughs> And I said, I couldn't put two and two together because I was like, what's happening here? Like, you know, so I said, yeah. I didn't. So I, I stopped. I said, for that reason. And then I tried this paddle. And, you know, I mean, this was, and then it was phenomenal. And, you know, I've been playing with it for the last couple of months with that. So, right. Were you a gearbox guy when you played racquetball? Yes. So that was another yeah. thing. Yes, I did play with gearbox. I still have it actually in my basement somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yes, I, I did play with Gearbox. Yeah, it was yeah. Raphael can design. He's got, he's a great designer. I mean, the, the stuff he's done, his engineering mind is incredible. I mean, some, some, I, I started with Gearbox in this sport. Um, and, I, you know, those paddles are amazing and they're so durable. You, you can play with it forever. Right. <laughs> Correct. So, yeah, Correct. really cool. Correct. So that All was right. Uh, I really appreciate your time, Vinay. Um, I, I hope to get to a couple events this year and uh, cheer on the bruisers and, uh, sure. and, love and that. yourself. Absolutely. Hey, um, love that. <laughs> best of luck this season. And Thank you. Um, all the links in the description for the bruisers and Vinay that you want to find, we will have down there. And um, yeah, if you get to event this year, don't be shy. Look me up, look him up. And uh, it's a very, very cool event to go to. And I believe they're starting this year a little earlier in May. So that's kind of cool. Absolutely. It'd be fun uh, with 12 teams. It's going to be a great mix. Oh. Uh, you know, a lot of good players. There's a lot of a lot more talent this year because last yeah, year, a lot of people depth. didn't even, yeah, didn't know about it. Right. So, but this year, I mean, both the yeah. combines are so, sold out. Right. I mean, right. you know, we, we couldn't accommodate everyone. So, uh, yeah. you know, and, and it's, it's going to be interesting. We'll see the next gen per se, if you may, right. That's uh, right. Exactly. With, uh, right. With a lot of, uh, 49 year old, you know, just who are going to be turning 50 <laughs> this year right. coming up. So those so, youngsters, yeah, so, those youngsters. Yeah. <laughs> those youngsters. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. So well, best of luck this season. Yeah. Thank best you. of luck. And, uh, go bruisers, go Jersey, go bruisers, go Princeton bruisers. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed our conversation today with Vinya Bahaguna of the Princeton Bruisers. Get out there and cheer on the National Pickleball League in its second season. Always better to see these people play in person. It's unbelievable. You go, they're 50 plus? Yeah, they are. And they're solid. All right, folks. Until next time. Hey, let's pickle.